Good afternoon, folks. Um, if you happen to have one of the reports, you could just uh, follow, um, starting on page 8. So what I'll do is just some highlights of my report that, I, uh, that was penned here. So we start out with uh, just a quick reminder of what your company does, um, you, for you who are shareholders. T-Tech Limited is Jamaica's leading managed IT services company. So what does that mean? We provide IT support services on a monthly recurring basis uh, in terms of payment. And these services are outlined as follows. Um, infrastructure management, and I'm starting, and I'm not starting at the beginning, I'll, I'll explain. Uh, infrastructure management, which is kind of what started the organization, where we handle and manage and keep, keep uh, tip-top shape our customers' IT infrastructure, which is servers, PCs, networks, and, and the like. Um, the next thing that we also provide in terms of services, cloud migration. So what's happening out there is a fair amount of organizations are in fact moving from physical, physical infrastructure, from buying servers in the office, to putting those services in the cloud. And so cloud migration, we have to be moving information and data, and that's one of the other services that we provide. The other major service we provide, um, John Gibson, who gave our prayer, is the head of the, our IT security area, and we help customers uh, be compliant with information technology uh, security and also um, do some sort of a cyber security prevention and help customers with policies. And those are the main um, recurring services with respect to uh, remote technologies that we use, uh, software that we use to help our customers. Service desk, um, this is, this is Fast becoming a discussion, I just came from an, uh, an, an event in Montego Bay where the, the whole, everybody's talking about BPO. And um, for the BPO, they may call it a call center. For us, we call it our service desk. So it is a business process outsourcing component, but it's what, what we call a high value business process outsourcing. So it's ITO and not just regular BPO. Um, so this IT outsourcing specific, specifically is a service desk where we provide um, desk site support, albeit mostly remotely, for, for our customers. And then, the, then two more things that you may see up there on the slides um, is unified communication. So the PBX systems, phone systems, voice, that's the only product that we sell. Um, everything else we do is services, and the only physical product we actually sell is um, phone systems. And the last one, at least on the far right, and on the uh, post uh, the, um, the banner that we see over that says T-Tech Consulting Services. So having delivered all of those other services that I mentioned for a number of years, um, our very happy customers, very satisfied customers kept asking us for more services because they said, look guys, you guys delivering these things well, we now help with, we now need some help with the value part of the business. Um, the, 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 the software, software selection, IT, secure, IT um, strategy, these, these areas that uh, we, weren't, we weren't helping before, and hence uh, we, we created that. So this is an overview of what we do, so as a quick reminder of the services you provide um, to our customers. Uh, our chairman had introduced um, some of the existing team members that were here already, and um, so this just kind of gives an overview of our management team. And these are the folks who, with the exception of Teddy, who on March 1 decided to relax a little bit more. Um, he, he still is the executive uh, chairman, so uh, we still have to make sure that we, we answer and we jump when he comes into the room, right? Um, <clears throat> And the other team members that are here were introduced already. I just noticed one of our uh, founders walking in the room just this moment, Mr. Hugh Allen. Hugh, could you? Right. Hugh is also a board member. <laughs> so those are so. So these are the team members that keep the things humming. Uh, Norman was introduced, and, and, and most of the persons here were introduced. Uh, the absent, um, who heads up our consulting group, is Marcel Smart, who happens to be on assignment on a project um, on the other side of the island, delivering a very, very important project for an important customer. So this is the, this is the team that holds it together and delivers the, the, the results and the amazing results that we'll see continuously growing. So report on 2017, this is our focus today. So on 2017, the highlights, um, we delivered $217.2 million in, in top line revenue. And this was uh, a, a little bit lower, a tad lower than our 2016 revenue. Um, 
we, 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 when we analyzed the numbers, we saw, we saw what happened. Um, the fact is that we had a great 2016, and there were a bunch of projects that we had part one, part two, part three of those projects. Um, some came through, some didn't come through. So when you deliver, you know, when you, when you really do very good in one year, the automatic assumption is that you're going to do amazing um, uh, the year following. And that's the plan a lot of the times, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And sometimes there are projects that get deferred and projects that um, get uh, rearranged based upon our customers' priorities. Um, if we had the controlling situation of the customers' decisions, the numbers would have been a little different. And so as a result, that, that adjusted our net profit um, where we were where 2016, there was a fair amount of uh, project base that had um, that had very low cost of uh, of of of, of um, input, and therefore 2016 delivered 39.3 million, and then we were down in 2017 18.6 million. Now, as we sat down and looked at our results, we realized there was some what I would refer to anyway as silver lining with you know with the results not looking so amazing because as I mentioned earlier the introduction of our services we are a uh, monthly recurring revenue cost uh, type of business um, similar to subscriptions in whether it's a cable company or, 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 a, or a cell phone company um, where that number for us where the numbers that our customers pay us on a monthly basis for all those services that I explained earlier, that number actually went up. So to us, that was, that was very, very good because that's a, that's a key important number that, um, that we look at. So that number went up by 9%. And also in 2017, what, um, what was very well for us is that one of our largest organizations signed a multi-year contract for us continuing our service and support for them. So that's quick, quick uh, highlights on the financials. Uh, Hortense will give a little bit more detail, all right? So next for me was our customer engagement. The organization sponsored a number of events in 2017 where we were able to engage with uh, um, the huge uh, opportunity uh, of, of prospects. Uh, one of those events uh, on the far left side, uh, we were speaking at the Jamaica Computer Society event, which at the end of 2017 was one of their largest events, seeing three to 400 people per day. Um, so these are our potent, direct potential customers. And we have had opportunities arising from those interactions that we actually have you know, closed. Some of them we have closed and some of them we continue to work on. We also, we also, our consulting team um, put together a group of events which we refer to as T-Tech Insights. <coughs> With this business, some of these projects take a very long time to close. And so the relationship building component of what we do is very, very important. And we also have to realize that we need to be continuously delivering, delivering some sort of information, some sort of update, and some sort of, as it says, some sort of insight to our potential customers for them to kind of understand where globally the rest of the IT world is going and then how we and uh, Tita can help them. And so these events, we brought in anywhere between um, 15 to 20 leading uh, decision makers within the IT space and had them sit down. And we just presented on general topics that um, obviously topics that we are involved in and supporting. And these, were, they have, these, have, uh, these have worked out to be very, very, um, very, very influential and beneficial for us so far. So those are some of the, some of the uh, customer engagement activities. Um, in terms of team or internal team, we made some investments with some online technologies which allow us to engage, engage directly um, on an almost monthly basis, get feedback how, how the team engagement is going. And so th this is a kind of a mock-up of our feedback and the beauty with the, with, with the technologies that we implemented, it's anonymous. So if a team member has some issues that they want to discuss but they really and truly don't want to speak it to anybody specifically, the feedback that they give comes into the system, the management team sees it and realizes that around certain topic areas we need to do something better. So while some organizations they do annual reviews of their of their team's engagement and they do uh, annual feedback surveys, the system that we have ha does it does it monthly. It, it it will send every two weeks it sends out um, surveys and questions and uh, the team members can choose 
and as long as it answer one or two of those surveys on a monthly basis, we will get, we will get that uh, feedback measured. And so this has helped us tremendously to facilitate change within the organization. I mean, for example, one of the things that we're now doing is um, how many days per, per week, Manish, that we do our little health and people bringing fr fruits. So buy f you know, fruits and put in the, put in the office um, to share for everyone. As a matter of fact, out of the feedback that we got from team members, might have been a little earlier, uh, we now give, our, our company gives our team members their birthday off. Right? Because one of the things we realized that we could do, um, you know, folks may need a little bit more, uh, you know, there's always more requested and what can we give? We could give some time. And so feedback from, from these uh, systems help us to, help us to um, formulate some of those. <laughs> I see um, our auditor telling his team member, don't come to me with none of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, the next item I wanted to mention was our process improvement. And uh, Norman Chen, who leads our technical services team, has been spearheading uh, implementing a number of systems. So in 2016, we began with implementation of a tool that we call our remote monitoring and management tool. So you notice that MRR, MR, Monthly Recurring Revenue, is reliant on RMM, right? How uncanny! I didn't make that up. So, <laughs> so monitor, so the recurring, um, so the remote monitoring and management tools uh, that were implemented allow us to now scale that part of the business where we are able to monitor and manage our customers, our customers uh, environment. So we implemented that system uh, 2016 into the middle of 2017, and then now when that was um, ongoing, one thing that we started now was now okay, how do we now that we have that automated tool working great, how do we now ensure that the information flowing from it flows directly into our accounting system and also information from that also can be integrated with our sales so we can see potential new opportunities within, it, within our customers and also ensure that the billing goes out on time and all this kind of stuff. That additional system now is what was referred to in the business as a professional services automation tool and that implementation of that PSA is ongoing. So we started that in middle to end, well, to the, towards the end of 2017 and we are doing it on a phase basis because the tool has a number of different components that help us, um, help us with, with, with the business. So those are two of the main tools. The top diagram kind of gives a high level overview. That diagram is also in the, in the report that speaks to uh, some, of the, some, some numbers as relates to the devices that we are able to mon monitor and manage remotely. Um, so I just see, you know, over 1,000 desktops, uh, over almost 300 servers, over 430 ne network points. And I think the numbers have actually increased since, since, since then because I said these were the, these were the 2017 numbers. The organization uh, re received some, in some international recognition in 2017. Um, there are two international bodies. Uh, this is the this organization, uh, MSP Mentor. So the business that we're in, in North America, they refer to as an MSP. So we're called a Managed Service Provider. Um, folks in Jamaica, you're just an IT company. But I, there's IT companies and there's IT companies. There's IT companies that sell PCs and boxes and servers. And then there's IT companies that do what they call break fix service. So something breaks, you call someone, you wait until they're able to come. And then they, um, then they turn up, right? And that's a little different from what we do. We do what we call proactive uh, support. And this business in, in, in North America and the rest of the world is called um, MSP, Managed Service Provider. And the lady is, yes, there's a little distraction on the left hand side that we're trying to manage here. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so this magazine and this organization, MSP Mentor Online, uh, they do an assessment globally of MSPs and we're actually recognized as one of the top um, top 501, <laughs> top, thank you, top 501 MSPs um, worldwide. And no, we weren't number 501, we checked. <laughs> we were way in the middle, right? In the middle of lots of North American companies. 256, my company secretary reminds me. Yeah. Head of marketing, that's what I should remember. Right? <laughs> so the interesting thing with this is that when we started using that, um, that remote management tool that I told you about, 
the organization whose tool we use, they actually said to us, you guys, you should, you should, you know, complete, you should complete um, the assessment. And we were like, you know, we didn't know what they were talking about. They said, no, man, here, such and such. And of course, the company reached out to us. So we looked at the, so they do a class assessment. They look at the website. They look at who your customers are. So they, 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 they do some work in the background. And then we have to do some assessment. So, we're, you know, it was new to us. And we've completed what we had to complete. And then we were pleasant to surprise when we got a response that this is where we were. So the other one was, um, you know, what is interesting is that once you get into this database globally, all of a sudden, lots more people start looking at you. So this magazine, um, CIO Review, a uh, big magazine globally, they called us and said, look, we've been kind of seeing what you guys are putting out there. So those who don't know, we have a Facebook page. Um, this one Facebook on Tech, T Tech Limited. We're also on Twitter. We're also on LinkedIn. So these companies, they go, they go out and take a look at what, what you're putting out, what content are you putting out, how engaged you are. And so we got um, again another one of these, and there are about three or four more. But we started getting too many. We said, look, IT security is important to us. Let's engage with these guys. They did um, interview. They had an interview with Teddy. They looked at what we did. We had to submit information, and then we, we were again pleasant surprise to receive one of the 20 most promising enterprise security solution providers in 2017. So that's another one of the recognitions that we'll see. Thank you very much, and thanks to John and his team for um, doing what they do to you know, let a magazine like this kind of recognize us for IT security. So during the year, um, so I'm kind of giving the year chronologically, kind of almost as it happens. Um, later down in the year, around maybe August, we kind of started looking back at. So at this time, I remember in 20, 2016, we celebrated 10 years, and so we've had. Uh, a certain mission and vision that the company, you know, was based on from before. But as we look to leap, you know, into into the next ten years, we started looking at what our what, what's our mission, what's our vision, um, with, and, and and the values that the company had. So through through that same engagement and team engagement process, uh, the team came together and. Firstly, the management team came and said, "Okay, guys, let's 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 go through you know the, the processes that you do to form a new vision." Um, it wasn't that new. We just kind of looked at what was said from work or what was said from 20, uh, 2006. Still relevant. We just kind of tweaked it, finessed it. So at the bottom right hand side, we said to help achieve greatness by delivering insanely good IT services. So the the, that rally cry that was inspired by rally cry that our uh, our founder and chairman, executive chairman, has been talking about delivering insanely good customer experience from day one. It's something that every new team member wants. They come into the organization, and something that they hear over and over and over again. And so we decided to uh, include it as part of the vision. And then now uh, we made some modifications with the, with the mission, and then handed that to the team. And then the team went through to said, okay, well if we're going to deliver this type of vision what needs to be our values and so if you look in the <clears throat> for those who have a report in front of you just open page three you will see the list of the values there and this was uh, the team came together from a little you know customer satisfaction group and and customers also are internal and external and we have several of those team members here for that group and they came up with this list of the values that they said okay in order for us to deliver that we have to be this and so we had um, you know the t-tech image uh, teamwork communication ownership empowerment uh, personal development confidentiality <coughs> um, commend and corporate social responsibility so this is uh, these are the values and the and the um, mission vision that were created that are re-energized and rejigged in 2017. So speaking about corporate social responsibility, um, that is the next slide that I will uh, give an overview on. So the organization, um, it says a Wilma's boy, I have to pause when I'm going to say certain things, right? I mean, our chairman and uh, several other team members uh, happens to be uh, JC alumni and so just coincidentally maybe I don't know that JC happens to be one of the leading robotics teams or probably the only I don't know Teddy you have to explain to me the only robotics team but that, they're not the only there are several out there but JC happens to be happens to be leading in the area and so we continue to support the team and we support the, the team members and one of our own, own team member Gavin is Gavin in that picture? Gavin is a far right, way over in the corner over there. He happens to be also with the team's coach, I think. Is he also the manager? I don't remember if he's the manager or not. I know he's the team coach. But he's kind of like the rally cry. Yes, sir. But the team is the coach as well. 
He's a coach of the international team. It was, it was a national team manager. Yes. You see, you know more than me than my team members. But I know. Um, so we, we continue to support the support the, uh, the robot robotics team. Huh? Okay, the, the robotics team. The other things that we also do. Um, so whereas T Tech is not, you know, we, we don't have this specific formal foundation that we do things as yet. It's, you know, it, it will happen. So what we do, we we kind of turn to the team and. And, and we support the various, uh, the various, uh, I guess the various things that the social responsibility things that the team supports. So there's a fair amount of um, 5Ks, especially the downtown area. We we'll try to support downtown. Our office is at 16 and a half Harbor Street, so we ensure that we, we support things that happen down there. So whether well, it's a Grace 5K, and as as a um, slide also mentioned, homework centers. So Grace and staff supports. Uh, within the within the within the area, there's a there's a technology that um, that they have that we have helped to, imp to to put in these homework centers. To um, you know, as it says, there's a homework center. They, the, these folks don't have computers at home. They don't have too much technology at home. So we create these areas that are common able to do use technology to do their to do their work. So those are some of the things that we do in terms of support for corporate social responsibility. And then. A little bit of outlook for 2018. Um, as mentioned in, in the report, you know we are in fact looking for opportunities, um, partnerships, mergers, uh, you know strategic strategic partnerships. We are looking for those. We're having discussions with a few folks now, um, internally and externally outside of Jamaica. Um, on the right, there is a diagram of uh, a, a different type of service delivery and a different product that we haven't done before. Uh, the application is called FileNexus, and we have partnered with an organization in Canada. Uh, the organization is called Lars Technologies. The only thing that these guys do is deliver enterprise uh, content management. Some may refer to it as, as document management, but it's a lot more than that. Um, it's workflow, it's, 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 um, there's some archiving involved. And what we've been doing is um, the president and CEO came down here, the senior vice president of technology came to visit us, and we were able to go to visit a few customers and prospects that we believe would benefit from reduced paperwork in the office. And when we showed them how the technology worked, people were like, okay, we definitely need this. And the key, key component, because the thing we have to realize is that enterprise document management been, been out there for many, many years. Lots of people tried projects, and some of these projects, uh, two years later and a few million dollars in, they're still stuck. One of our challenges was when we said that our partnership and this software could deliver and you realize some benefits and value within two weeks. But I kind of said two weeks with a straight face because nobody would believe that because their experience has been horrible. But we have, in fact, um, visited customers, gotten some needs, and be able to show them mockups and be able to pull, we're ready to pull the trigger, and we have given them dates. And so we have about four proposals delivered already. And so we will see and hear some more um, in the coming future. So this is one of the key things that we are looking forward to grow with, the, with our consulting arm in, 20, in 2018 and beyond um, with, this, with this software. So <coughs> Q1, our Q1 results um, showed a little, uh, there, was, there, was, there was great improvement over our 2017. And this is mainly from a lot of the work that I spoke about with respect to our investment in marketing and our investment in a lot of those con customer engagements in, in 2017, where a fair amount of those follow-ups started happening and we actually started visiting, visiting customers and started closing a few deals um, early, early in the year. And some of these projects did begin late um, 20, 2017 and ended in, um, in 20, early 2018 and delivered some of these results for us. So we saw 23.3 increase in revenue, 23.3 percent increase over Q1 2017, Q1 compared to Q1 2018. Um, yes, the expenses uh, did go up. Um, the main reason why uh, for those expenses, when somebody comes to you with a massive opportunity, and you look at it, and the initial on the outset, the, you, 
you know you have to hire some external consultants. You know you have to put in some additional costs in the business. But the long-term opportunity is there. You have to make a decision. Am I going to walk away from this because the profit is tiny? Or am I going to grab it with two hands and run with it and try to try to extract the maximum you can from that opportunity. So in Q1, we entered into a, a fairly big uh, consulting engagement, which requires us to be hiring uh, several external team members with skills that we don't have to help. So some skills we have, so we pull them from internally, but others we have to hire um, external teams. And so uh, we saw our expense bump up in Q1. But um, we see what happened with the net profit. Um, the net profit did, did, did bounce at 50, 2.2 percent uh, from 4.4 million to 6.7 million in Q1 2018. So this is just a quick highlight. These results were released and they were placed on the stock exchange. And um, we are looking forward to a great uh, year. We are out there working very, very hard to close a number of, still a number of the opportunities that we spoke about in, um, in that we met with a lot of those persons in those um, customer engagements and prospect engagements. So. That's it for me for my highlights.